Okay, so remember that um, the initiation of an action potential, the, the beginning of an electrical message that will propagate or move down this wire-like axon you know, to its end, typically in a sort of classical standard neuron like we're like looking at here in pipe cleaners, uh, you know, begins you know, with depolarization, right? With a change in the membrane potential, a reduction in the charge difference inside versus out at this very specialized structure at the beginning of the axon known as the axon hillock. Uh, this little hill at the beginning of the axon. If you can depolarize to minus 55, right, millivolts, reduce that charge difference, you know, by letting in, you know, sodium ions, for example, uh, you know, by somehow, uh, you know, altering that charge difference, allowing ions to move across to um, redistribute so that the difference in charge drops from rest at minus 65 down to minus 55, well, then you're going to swing open all of those voltage-gated, you know, sodium and potassium channels and begin that, you know, influx of sodium, outflow of potassium, that, you know, depolarization, reversal of polarization, right? And then repolarization, and this kind of will propagate all the way down to the end of the axon. And at the end of the axon, well, you know, there's a gap typically, right? And you're going to have another uh, neuron, let's say the dendrite of the next cell, you know, lo located across that gap. This is called the synapse. And this axon terminal membrane, this is the presynaptic terminal. This is the presynaptic neuron, the one that initiated an action potential, sent it down to its end, and now that action potential is arriving here at the presynaptic terminal. Um, that's going to result in the release of a chemical neurotransmitter. It's a chemical that can transmit from the presynaptic to the postsynaptic neuron, the next, the after the synaptic gap neuron. And uh, that release of neurotransmitter, that represents a change in the language being spoken by neurons in your brain. Here you've got electrical currents, right, that are, you know, depolarization, repolarization, that's propagating from one end of a neuron down to the end. And now you're getting the conversion, the translation, you know, from the arrival of an electrical message into the release of a chemical. So now we've got a chemical form of communication, right? And then that chemical communication is often then interpreted by this postsynaptic cell, by specialized proteins that are embedded in the membranes and the phospholipid bilayers of this postsynaptic cell that will grab onto the chemical neurotransmitter that will receive the message uh, and then change their shape in ways that can either excite, right, depolarize, and that means either open a hole, right, that can let, for example, sodium, you know, inside the cell to go from the resting potential of minus 65 down to the threshold potential of minus 55, or it can inhibit, right? It can be bound by a protein in the membrane of the postsynaptic cell here that the neurotransmitter can, uh, and that can swing open a channel that can, you know, reduce, or sorry, increase the difference in charge between the inside and out, reduce the likelihood that this cell will fire, inhibit the next neuron. That can be, for example, you know, chloride coming in, or, you know, it's negatively charged, so it would go from the outside to the inside because of the concentration gradient force and increase the difference in charge inside versus out. Remember, hyperpolarization, you know, going bigger than the resting potential of minus 65 towards like minus 75 or minus 80 is taking you away from the threshold of minus 55, right, which is a depolarized value that would initiate an action potential in the next cell. So the point is that you've got one kind of language you know, being spoken within neurons, this is electricity, right? The movement of charged particles. And then at the, at the presynaptic axon terminal, that there's a conversion from one language to another, from electrical, you know, charge differences to the release of neurotransmitter into the cleft. And then that neurotransmitter, you know, can bind to these special proteins in the, in the memory and be received by them. They're actually called receptor proteins because they receive you know the chemical message and when they bind you know the neurotransmitter they'll change their shape and that can either result in 
depolarization and excitement of the next cell or, you know, push it towards sending its own, you know, action potential and then, you know, transferring that message further along networks in the brain, including those that are essential for perceptual experience or inhibit, you know, block, you know, prevent, hyperpolarize, you know, the transmission, you know, along the next neuron. That way you can set up, you know, uh, the, the flow of information through networks in the brain. The language in your brain is electrochemical and at the synapse there's a conversion, you know, from electricity to chemical and then back often to some sort of electrical message in the next cell. Mm -hmm.